This morning, the mayor of the nation's largest city with this controversial warning about the recent influx of migrants, many arriving on buses provided by Texas and Florida. This issue will destroy New York City. Destroy New York City. Mayor Eric Adams says the city is already running a $12 billion deficit, and it could cost another $12 billion to address the migrant crisis in the next few years. Every service in this city is going to be impacted. All of us. City schools also affected, taking in nearly 20,000 more students. Adams is demanding more financial help from the Biden administration, while Republicans seize on his comments. A statement on House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's website says liberal Democrats are finally coming to terms with the reality that the Biden border crisis is hurting the country. But critics call Adams' comments fear-mongering, saying despite the upfront costs, immigration is key to a healthy economy. Meanwhile, in Chicago, migrants have been sleeping on the floors of police stations and even at O'Hare Airport. Hey, what's up, guys? John here. Elon Musk just shared a video on Twitter about the migrant crisis. If you have an extra room or suite in your home, please consider hosting a family. And what they are doing and what they're planning and what is likely coming next for millions of Americans and millions of property owners nationwide. Students are being forced to learn online as nearly 2,000 migrants move into their school. Now, in this video, well, first I'm gonna show you the video, but I'm gonna show you more importantly, why what they're saying right here, soon it may become mandatory to house people. I'm gonna show you the you know, the writing on whitehouse.gov. I'm gonna show you some of the backstory of what's actually happening. Show you how big of a story this really is because it's getting almost no attention. Sure, you're hearing about people coming, no doubt about it. You're hearing about millions of people crossing the border, but that is a small drop in the bucket compared to the real story that I'm gonna give you here. Most importantly, if you have an extra room or suite in your home, please consider hosting a family. Safe housing and shelter is our most pressing need. Become a sponsor family. You can contact the Brazilian Worker Center for more information on how you can step up if you're willing to have an additional family be part of your family. If you're a local official, a college president, a business owner or a faith leader with an available building or space in your community, please work with us to offer it as a shelter site. If you're a social service provider, please consider becoming an emergency assistance homeless shelter provider. Our resources are stretched thin there as well. And if you're a hotel or a motel owner, consider opening it up for emergency assistance. If you're a landlord or a property owner, we can use you too. We can connect you with service providers to help transition families into permanent housing. Everyone has something they can offer. Most importantly. So 26 million views in 12 hours. Now let's look at the fact sheet, which came out. It's called the all inside. Right. It says today the Biden Harris administration will announce the launch of All Inside, a first of its kind initiative to address unsheltered homelessness across the country. All Inside is a key part of All In, the federal strategic plan to prevent and end homelessness, which was set a bold goal to reduce homelessness 25 percent in essentially the next 12 months. Ultimately, build a country where every person, they didn't say every citizen, every person, has a safe and affordable home. Now, there's, a, there's something really interesting here. So when they say right here, they put this out there, soon it will become mandatory, it will be mandatory. And then they work on something called the National Renters Bill of Rights, which right here it says, Renters Bill of Rights one step closer to becoming a reality. One month ago, federal rent control, debate over national renters protections heats up. But under this White House uh, Renters Bill of Rights offers tenants a whole new set of protections to where and you take this into consideration what they may start to do is start to offer financial incentives initially take someone into your home maybe you get a thousand bucks a month or two thousand bucks a month you'll start to receive some revenue but if this does in fact happen and then they start to bring forward this renter's bill of rights you might have a really difficult time getting people out of your home you might see a situation to where you know you can't get people out of the home so whether it be a tenant whether it be you know people here like you just don't know what this is going to look like but one thing we do know for sure is so far according to NPR 2.5 million migrants have crossed the border in 2023 this is the number in which they are giving us so you have to imagine if this is what they are recording 2.5 million what is the real number like because they're not registering every single person that crosses there's probably a lot of people that are you know on you know uncounted for
A record number of people have arrived at the southern U.S. border in the past year, according to the U.S. Customs Border Protection data. Federal agents encountered roughly 2.5 million migrants at the southern border in just 2023. Now, here's what's interesting. You have 35,000 vets that are homeless, 35,000 veterans, right? How, if we can't take care of our vets, and we have 35,000 of them, how can we take care of 2.5 million, right? What about homeless? 582,000 homeless people. Can't take care of the homeless. We can't really do much for them. I mean, it seems like that situation is getting worse by the day, especially if you live in a big city, New York City, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Oakland, you name it. The homeless situation is getting out of control. And uh, when we can't take care of our vets, we can't take care of the homeless people, how are we gonna take care of 2.5 million? It's just a, a question. Right now, we are paying about $451 billion per year for the migrant crisis, $451 billion. And they go on to say Americans could pay up to $451 billion to care for migrants who entered the U.S., but have been released into the country or escaped from custody, according to a new report due out Monday from the House of Republicans and obtained exclusively by the Post. Every day, millions of Americans' taxpayers' dollars are spent on cost directly associated with this. And the unprecedented crisis of the southern southwest border sparked Department of Homeland Security, right? So you look at this situation and you're like, all right, well, now New York City is closing a school to put forward 2,000 um, 2, migrants. And in Illinois, they're providing $9,000 in rental assistance to migrants seeking, seeking temporary housing. This is what I do believe is going to happen. They're going to start bringing these checks forward for homeowners, property owners, investors, landlords, you name it. Everything that the lady said there, every, every single property is going to start to receive these types of financial incentives to start bringing people inside of the homes. Once you do it, once you do it, it might not be the ideal situation. It could be. It really could be. It could be a great situation for some people. I'm not going to rule out that entire situation. There could be a couple you know, positive situations, but there could also be some situations that might not be so positive. So you just want to definitely weigh the, the pros and the cons in the event that you know, this does go forward. When they share that soon it will be mandatory, and it gets 26 million views, and you start to look at this situation, where, where else are they going to go, right? Shalom. I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem El Shai, Yahweh, is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahweh Shai is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahweh Shai. And um, pretty much, as you can see with this migrant situation, this whole thing is happening in order to cause a global economic collapse, in order to usher in a new system. Now, they may or may not, you know, propose a mandatory bill, you know, for um, Americans to start housing these migrants. All right. And um, pretty much this is just going to implode the economy. But I'm just going to go into it um, briefly. You know why the migrants are here in the first place. All right. So I'm going to read this in the NLT. This is um, 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. It says so that Satan would not outsmart us. Now, the Satan is talking about is a Satan like individuals that run the planet Earth, which is who? The Edomites, the so-called white men in sea line. Beginning with the central bankers on down. They control all these countries through the money supply, through the banking system. All right. It says, well, not our smartest. He cannot outsmart us because through the blood and sacrifice of Yahweh Shai, we have the Holy Spirit, which is the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of these scriptures. And the scriptures tell you that the spirit of Yahweh Shai is a spirit of prophecy. So we understand this man's agendas according to biblical prophecy. Through the Holy Spirit, it says, for we are familiar with his evil schemes, his different agendas, you know, the 2030 agenda, which is the New World Order agenda, you know, the Georgia Guidestones, you know, his um, agenda to set up a cashless digital society. But ultimately, what's happening now? The Lord, he's stirring up the pot for Jacob's trouble. All right. With Jacob's trouble, it involves numerous things. You know, it involves a global economic collapse. But within that economic collapse, you're going to have a bunch of things simultaneously 
happening all at the same time. All right. And this migrant situation is just going to make things worse. All hell is getting ready to break loose. So now let me read this real quick. So this is from Cora.com, right? And um, I'm going to read, you know, one of these um, comments. I had it here, but, you know, you know how it is when you got to refresh the, um, the page. You know, you lose sight of where you was at. So let me see if I can find it real quick. Let me scroll down here. Okay, here we go. So this this um comments by this guy named Paul, right? It says um so this is going to go into it briefly why you have a migrant crisis all around the world, mainly in America and Canada, but really all around the world. All right? It says weak governments in Mexico and Central and South America let corruption in, then gangs formed to protect people in the area from that corruption. Yeah, because the migrants, they get smuggled here, all right? The migrants, they pay a fee to what they call a coyote, and then the coyote brings them up all the way through South and Central America to the border of Mexico. And in between them time periods, you know, the migrants, they're protected by the cartels, all right? It says, um, then the gangs got bigger as they discovered the value of being ruthless. Then the gangs found... That moving drugs and other illegal things to the U.S. was very lucrative. It says eventually gangs became more powerful than any government that could form. People who could not live under the terror and corruption of the gangs began leaving for places where they could live and work and raise families in peace. And that place is U.S. and Canada. All right. So this is why you have the migrant situation, because in Central and South America, them countries is going through hyperinflation, all right? It was inflation, but now it's hyperinflation. And it's so bad that the money that these Central and South Americans make is not enough to sustain themselves. So their back is against the wall. So now they're looking for a way out. And that way out, they feel, is through America mainly and um, Canada, all right? So now let's go here. This is the book of um, Habakkuk 2 and 6, KJV. It says, Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his, how long? And to him that leadeth himself with thick clay. When you go into this word clay, the word in the Hebrew is Ibatia, and it says, Weight of pledges, heavy depths. So with these migrants, they're going to pass more spending bills. They're going to hand out more financial aid and government assistance and ultimately this is going to cause an economic collapse within america so ultimately this migrant crisis is happening all right because ultimately the elite banking families they want to cause a economic collapse within america but ultimately a global economic collapse in order to usher in a new system so they need to have all hell break loose and come up with the solution of their new world order being accepted. All right. So this is eventually what's going to happen. You got all these migrants here for Jacob's trouble. All right. They ain't going to have these Americans. They're going to be bringing in these migrants into their homes. And, you, you know, you're bringing a stranger into your house. You know, these people, they could kill you. You don't even know, like, you know, their hidden motives. All kind of things is going on. You know, then... You got reports that um, some of these migrants, they can be on um, Gurkha troops, all right? They could be like agents. You know, they could be terrorists here to cause cyber attacks and, you know, bombings and false flag attacks and stuff of that nature to cause harm to Americans, all right? So these things is being done on purpose. They want this to happen. See, they can't even help the homeless here in America but then they can help the migrants, right? So now let's go here. It's going to be a quick lesson. Um, Jeremiah 51 and 7, it says, Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. Why is Babylon a golden cup in the Lord's hand? Because this place is the beacon of wickedness. This place is the most wickedest place to ever exist in the planet Earth. Why? Because America takes on all the customs, 
and philosophies and ways of the heathen nations all in one country. So this is what you have going on. So that's why there's so many different um, similarities between America and Egypt, you know, America and these ancient empires of the heathen nations, because America is holding, is um, uplifting the philosophies and customs of those um, heathen nations, all right, that was destroyed by the Lord for their wickedness, right? So it says that made all the earth drunken. Now, how has America made all the earth drunken? There was democracy, you know, it's on westernization, it's philosophy, you know, Hollywood, all these different nations is copying off of the ways of America, which is to ultimately just be wicked, you know, have that do as thou wilt spirit, step away from traditional values, you know, and, and things that pertain to like nature, all right, that the natural way how the Most High through Yahweh Shai created things. See, now these nations, beginning with America, they're stepping away from that, all right? So this is why people is miserable. This is why people is strung out on drugs. This is why people is alcoholics. This is why people is suffering. Why? Because the Edomites, the so-called white men in the sea line, you know, he's making people lives and live in hell under this system. All right. So it says the nations have drunken of her wine. Right. What's the wine? The wine represents the philosophies, the westernization. Right. The religion. It says, therefore, the nations are mad. Yeah, they're mad because the leaders of these countries, they're saying that America is the problem. And when you have people in your country that's following the ways of America, you witness the downfall of your country, all right? So the nations is mad. And this is another reason why you're gonna have a nuclear war take place, you know, in the form of World War Three. It says, um, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her take bond for her pain? If so, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. So no matter what you do to America, it doesn't matter who's the president, it doesn't matter, you know, who's in the White House, you know, passing the executive orders and bills and stuff of that nature. You cannot save America on an economic level. This place is destined to be destroyed. And the fact that you had the migrant crisis going on, that's just more problems added on to this economy. All right. That's more spending bills. That's more government assistance. That's more Americans protesting and getting mad. Because they're like, wait a minute, you know, we're citizens. You know, why the hell are you giving the migrants all this government assistance? Meanwhile, you got people that's American citizens, but they're homeless. All right. So this is going to spark outrage. This is going to spark uproars of the people. It says, um, yep, she, um, Jeremiah 51, 9 again. It says we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go everyone into his own country. And that's going to be the mindset of immigrants that had American citizenship. They're going to go back to their country because they're going to realize, look, we used America up. You know, this place is a cash cow. All of our kids are in school. You know, we have enough money to retire. We use this place up. Now let's go back to our country and live like kings and queens, so-called, right? It says, um, for her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. Yeah, because how was America established? Through the rape, robbery, and murder of the children of Israel, which are you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. The sea line of Jacob. All right? So the Most High, he remembers how the Edomites established America. And he's about to judge the Edomites. So now I'm going to end it with this. This is Jeremiah 30 and 7. It says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, right? A time of trouble for the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Because ultimately, those Venezuelans, they're Israelites. You know, they're from the tribe of Asher. All right? So it's a time of trouble for all 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Right? But when you read in the scriptures, the Lord always judged the northern kingdom first before he judged the southern kingdom. All right? The so-called Hispanics and Native American Indians, they was taken down first. And then the southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. 
The same thing is going on within South and Central America, all right? Pursuing um, second measures 15 to 16. So now all those problems is getting ready to come here to America, right? It says um, it is even a time of Jacob's trouble, right? Because you're going to have persecution take place. You're going to have um, an economic collapse take place. Crime is going to be at an all-time high. You're going to have different disease outbreaks going on. The unemployment rate is going to be sky high. Police officers is quitting their jobs. So martial law got to be enforced. I mean, it's a lot of things that's going to be going on at the same time. All right. It says, but he shall be saved out of it. The he that's going to be saved out of it is who? The elect of the nation of Israel. All right. Now, let me read that in the NLT and I'm going to close the lesson. This is Jeremiah 30 and 7 NLT. It says, in all history has never been such a time of terror. So all the historical events that's taking place on the planet Earth is not going to equal up or measure up to Jacob's trouble. Why? Because, yes, it's a time of trouble for the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, the children of Israel. But ultimately, every nation is going to be affected during Jacob's trouble. All right? It says, it will be a time of trouble for my people Israel. And who are the Israelites by blood and by seed? The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. It says, yet in the end, they will be saved. Going back to Daniel 12 and 1. All right? So we don't got nothing to fear. You know, the Lord, he's stirring up the pot. The Lord is getting ready to, um, you know, bring forth Jacob's trouble, which ultimately that's going to lead into the hour of temptation. All right? The time period when they make this mark of the beast, which is the RFID chip implant mandatory throughout the whole planet Earth. All right. And the fact that they keep um, giving out free handouts, you know, government assistance, you know, giving out free money to homeowners that are um, taking these migrants. All that is just a trap. All right. All that is just deception, because ultimately when they make this chip mandatory, they're going to try and offer people benefits as well. And that's the temptation part. You know, the fact that you can't buy and sell and whatever at that time they offer people to sway them to take the chip. You know, universal basic income and more. All right. So Lord willing, you 